Hello and welcome. My name is Azman Adurrahman. In this presentation, we look at some of the theories and models that were developed by safety experts to help better understanding on how accidents happen. These theories provided the foundation for accident prevention program aimed at preventing accidents by preventing unsafe acts and unsafe conditions. By the end of this presentation, you should be able to understand how accident and incident are classified. What are the accident triangle, ratio of different types of accident? What are the costs involved in accident? The theory of accident causation, a theory that explains how accident happens. And the last one is root cause analysis. It helps to understand the difference between root cause and basic cause of an accident. All of these theories are very useful when conducting accident investigation. You can also apply these theories to your workplace accident prevention program. A combination of theories and model may be the better approach towards problem solution. Accident and incident are the two words that are easy to confuse, but they are not exactly the same. Let's begin by defining exactly what accident and incident is. Accident can be defined as an unplanned and unexpected event that caused loss of life, injury, property damage, interruption of normal activities, or damage to environment. Incident is unplanned and unexpected event that has potential to cause injury, illness, or property damage. Sometimes they are called near miss. So both events are unplanned. Both can present injury or damage. The difference is in accident, the event results in injury. However, in incident, the event does not, but it has potential to cause injury. Basically, by definition, all accidents begin with an incident, but not all incidents result in an accident. In this example, you will see the relationship between incident and accident. Bricks and a hole in a walkway are hazard. Riding a bicycle just beside the brick is an incident. Riding a bicycle in the hole will cause an accident. Both are events already happen. One has no result and the other cause an accident. There are several ways to classify an accident. This includes classification by the extent of injury cause or by the level or cause of the damage to property. Unsafe acts are things that people do that are obviously just not safe. Some examples are horseplay, not using PPE, using damaged tools, violating safety rules. Unsafe conditions are a condition in the workplace that is likely to cause injury or property damage such as missing machine guards, damaged equipment, slippery floor, and improper storage of material. A near miss is any form of incident that has the potential to cause but does not actually result in injury or property damage or an interruption to normal operation. Near misses also may be referred to as close call or near accident. Property damage is damage or destruction of real or personal property caused by negligence, willful destruction, or act of nature. Accident is any unplanned or unexpected event which causes injury or property damage. Accident may involve lost time injury or LTI. It simply means that number of days the workers cannot work due to the injury. LTI also includes number of days the workers 
unable to perform his or normal duties after return to work. Accident triangle shows a relationship between the number of accidents resulting in serious injury, minor injuries, or no injuries. The relationship was first introduced in 1931 by Herbert William Heinrich. Heinrich was a pioneer in the field of workplace safety and health. From the study of 75,000 accident reports data, he suggests that for every 300 near misses, there will be 29 minor injuries and one major injury. He concluded that by reducing the number of minor accidents, companies will see a fall in the number of major accidents. The triangle was widely used in the industrial safety and health program and was described as a foundation of safety and health philosophy. The theory was developed further by Frank Ebert in 1966 based on the analysis of 1.7 million accident reports. He produced an amended triangle that showed a relationship of one serious injury accident to 10 minor injury accident to 30 property damage caused by accident to 600 incident or near misses without injury. Bert showed a relationship between the number of reported incidents and the number of major accidents and claimed that the majority of accidents could be prevented by taking proper control. Whenever an accident occurs, someone always asks, how did it happen? Accidents do not just happen, they are caused. Causes of accident can be unsafe act, unsafe condition, or a combination of both. If you are going to prevent accident, we must know what causes the unsafe act and unsafe condition. Studies by Heinrich shows that 88% of all accidents are caused by unsafe action or unsafe practices such as reaching into a running machine, operating a machine without guards, using defective tools or equipment, or horseplay during work. 10% are caused by unsafe conditions, such as poor housekeeping, improper storage, defective or broken equipment, machine with no cards, and so on. However, unsafe condition exists as a result of personal action of a person. And only 2% are caused by uncontrolled factors or act of nature. Over the period of time, safety management approach has shifted from engineering to managing human to prevent human error. Recently, a lot of study has been conducted about role of human error in accident causation. Study of human behavior has become important aspect in managing safety at workplace. One of the good models for understanding what motivates humans is Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Maslow first introduced this concept in 1943. This theory explained that people are motivated by five basic categories of needs. They are physiological, security, belonging, esteem, and self-actualization. Needs lower down in the hierarchy must be satisfied before individual can attend to the higher needs. Accidents do not just happen, they are caused. Accidents do not have single cause. The accidents are usually the result of a combination of factors which may vary from situation to situation. There is a lot of possibilities for what can contribute or cause a workplace injury. They can be grouped into four, that is, environment, equipment and materials, system and procedure, or error of worker. Employers should be aware of these contributing factors that may exist in their workplace. Equipment. Are equipment and tools suitable for the task? Are substances used in the workplace being handled 
stored and disposed of properly? System and procedure. Are there safe operating procedure? Are there any rules enforced? Are instruction and training provided for each workers? Environment. Does the work environment such as facility layout, walking surfaces, ventilation, lighting create any hazard? Are they comply with local environmental law? Worker. Are they trained and skilled in performing the work? What are the workers' attitudes towards their work? Are they focused when doing their work? Are they overtired? Any accident at work result in both direct and indirect costs, which are represented by the iceberg model. Direct costs tend to be the one that we think of first. They include medical costs and wage replacement. Indirect costs are hidden costs. They account for more of the overall cost of an accident. They can be 8 to 36 times higher than direct costs, depending on various factors following the accident. Indirect injury costs include but are not limited to legal costs, repair or replacement of damaged materials or equipment, product delay, loss of future business, and so on. All these costs can have an impact on company business. By avoiding accident, company can save money and time. You can estimate the magnitude of the accident by comparing the number of accidents with the lost work days. You should also include in your report any costs incurred during the accident. For decades, people have been asking this question. Why do accidents happen? Over the years, several theories of accident causation were introduced that try to explain why accidents occur. Single-factor theory assumes that an accident is the result of single cause. Further, if that single cause can be identified and eliminated, the accident will not be repeated. The reality is that accidents always have more than one contributing factors. The multiple factor theory says that an accident occurs when a number of factors act together to cause an accident. Determining the cause leading to an accident can be quite difficult as there are so many factors to consider. An accident causation model is a systematic method of finding what type of failure or error cause accident and so action can be taken to address this failure before they have the chance to occur. This example shows a comparison between single and multiple model of accident causation. In this scenario, a forklift accidentally hit a worker while working at a warehouse. According to the single model, the only cause is forklift operator fall for not being careful. The solution is to take a disciplinary action. When using the multiple model, several causes of accident can be identified. Among them are, does the forklift operator properly train on operating the forklift? Does the operator authorize to operate the forklift? Is there any safe operating procedure for operating a forklift? Does the forklift is in good condition and safe to drive? Does the environmental condition such as lighting or ventilation at the warehouse create hazard? And so on. In 1931, Herbert W. Heinrich presented a model known as the Domino Theory. This theory states that the accident result from a chain of sequential event, just like a line of dominoes falling over. When one of the dominoes fall, it triggers the next one, and the next one, and so on. The second is injury, such as cut, fracture. Injury is caused by accident, the event that results in injury, due to the unsafe acts or unsafe condition, due to the fall of the person, 
that is negative traits that lead to unsafe acts. Caused by their negative traits that inherited from social environment. According to Heinrich, the accident is avoided by removing one of the dominoes, normally the middle one or unsafe act. This theory provided the foundation for accident prevention measure aimed at preventing unsafe acts and unsafe condition. The first update of the domino theory was presented by Bird and Loftus in 1976. Using the same number of domino, the elements are lack of control, refers to inadequate system, standard and compliance by the management. This led to the basic causes. That includes human factor such as incompetent and also job factor such as inadequate work standard. Immediate causes are unsafe acts and unsafe condition. They are symptoms of incident. Accident is undesired events such as contact with hazardous substances, contact with hot object, and loss is the result of accident. It can be lost to human, property, and environment. Bird stated that Management failure is another leading cause of accident at work. Management should implement an effective safety and health program that able to prevent accident and avoid injury. This example apply the bird domino model. In this scenario, a worker had an accident while operating a stamping machine. Let's analyze each sequence of events. Worker hand caught between moving object while trying to reach something in the machine. As a result, the worker's hand crush and suffers from major injury. Why the worker's hand crush? Because the worker put his hand inside the machine while it is in motion. How can the worker's hand enter dangerous part of the machine? Because the safety sensors that supposed to protect the workers is not functioning. Why the sensor is not functioning? Because there is no one assigned to repair the machine's safety sensor and the management did not perform routine check of the machine's safety. For the control measures, the management can control at the immediate causes. That is, remind the worker not to put his hand into the machine and at the same time put a warning sign. However, this is not an effective control. Worker may forget and repeating do the unsafe act. The best way is at the first domino, that is repair or replace the sensor and make sure it is functioning and tested daily before letting the worker operate the machine. From here, we can conclude that if the safety sensor is repaired at the early stage, that is control from the management, accident will not happen and injury can be avoided. Causes of accident can be classified into three. The basic or root cause is the most fundamental cause that can be corrected to prevent recurrence of the error, such as poor safety management, rules not enforced, lack of training, and so on. They are underlying causes. Contributing causes are event or condition that increase probability or severity of the accident, such as equipment failure, missing guard, and so on. Direct causes is immediate event, usually the result of one or more unsafe act or unsafe condition, such as ignoring safety rules, horseplay, and so on. They are the symptoms showing signs of poor safety management system. Corrective action that focusing only on contributing and direct causes of an accident may eliminate the symptom of a problem but not the actual underlying problem itself. This may lead to recurrence of similar issue or problem in the future.
root cause analysis is defined as a systematic process for identifying the root causes of problem or event and an action plan for responding to them. A root cause analysis answers this question. What happened? How did it happen? Why it happened? And what needs to be corrected? By conducting a root cause analysis, employer may be able to completely prevent the same incident from recurring. Following are the tools necessary to conduct a root cause analysis. Employers should use a combination of the tools to get an optimum result. This concludes my today's presentation. I hope this will be useful in developing your workplace accident prevention program. Thank you and see you again.